Shalom. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rakhakodash, Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, whom this world eagerly calls God, and Yahweh Shai being his name of his only begotten Son, whom this world eagerly calls Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well, and peace and mercy to the hopeful elect, those men that are doing his work in sincerity and in truth across the four corners of the earth, present their body as a living sacrifice. To you all, I say shalom and greetings, and Lord willing, this lesson is edifying through the Spirit. All right, um, I was just having a discussion with, uh, you know, someone earlier, and it made me realize that uh, if you're not in the truth, for the most part, I'm starting to realize people are uh, willingly ignorant, um, willingly foolish, especially with the times that we're living in and uh, comfortable and afraid at the same time, too, you know, and what sparked this is um, when I was having a conversation with them, what happened is I said, are you uh, are you aware of the war that's going on? And their answer was, uh, no, I don't know. And I, I don't care. I don't need to know what's going on. You know, that was their response. And, you know, Quite frankly, you know, I understood the scriptures, but I was a little hurt. I'm not going to lie, because I'm like, <sighs> all the wild things going in the world, but people assume since it's not a bothering to them personally, why, con why concern yourself with it? But it's going to be a problem for you eventually. You know, it's going to be a problem. People just don't see the big picture. Okay, um, I'm going to start with this. This is Hosea 4 and 6. My people, you Israelites, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you are the children of Israel, God's chosen people. It says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. All right? Our people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, man. All right? And that, you know, first and foremost, the scriptures and the knowledge about who you are, that you're an Israelite. But in regular everyday events, man, current events and uh, how to carry yourself, conduct, what you're supposed to eat, how you're supposed to move, you know, how you're supposed to treat others, who can you trust, right? So you'll be destroyed due to lack of knowledge, right? It says, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. And I pray the Lord don't reject this person uh, because I care for him, you know, um, but nonetheless, they it was willingly rejecting knowledge, but you know it wasn't necessarily about the truth. But still, like if somebody, you know, that's the thing I notice a lot of people in the world. You can't have serious conversations with them a lot of times. It got to be worldly stuff. You talk about music or TV or you know weapons or superheroes. You know. All of that kind of stuff, they'll, they'll talk about games. But when it comes to serious conversations, people would rather not, okay? And they even put that in the work in the work area. And a lot of the work areas, I understand, you know what I'm saying, because you don't want people fighting with differences. But they say, like, no politics, no religion, and something else at work. I always forget the third one, but, you know. But it says, I also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy power. I will also forget thy children. And that's gonna, what's going to happen to the majority of our nation. The two-thirds of our people, they're gonna, the Lord is going to forget about you. He's going to forget you and your children. You know, if you don't have, if you don't know the Lord, if you rejected him, and you don't have someone that cares about you, that hoping that you'll still be saved, even through your ignorance, you're going to be rejected, man. It says, as they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore, I will change their glory into shame. You see, and that's what a lot of our people, they think they're in a position of glory. But it's going to be a shameful position eventually, man. Okay, it says, they eat up the sin of my people and they shall set their, they set their heart on their iniquity. People just like to do wicked over and over and over again and think that nothing is going to come from it. It says, then there shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them. Excuse me, and there shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways and reward them their doings. And so a lot of our people are going to be rewarded uh, very, very badly, very severe punishments for their uh, wickedness. You know, when I speak about this person, it's somebody who cares for me, too. So, 
you know, just being foolish and in the world. They 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 perform there a lot, so it is what it is. You know, but I pray to mercy, Lord have mercy on them. All right, but it says, For they shall eat and not have enough. They shall commit whoredom, and they shall not increase, because they have left off to take heed, left off to take heed to the Lord, which means they don't want to listen. And that's the biggest problem with our people. They just refuse to listen, man. Right? Said, but the scriptures say, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. So we're doing what we supposed to do. Okay. This is uh Acts seventeen and thirty. It says, And the times of this ignorance the most high winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. So, you know, there was a point in your life where the Lord would just wink at your ignorance. When you go into ignorance, it means not knowing, to not know, right? Ignore. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's something you just wasn't aware of. But it says, at the times of this ignorance, right? That's how we were in the world. We didn't know, but the Lord would wink at it. So you would do something that's off in the world. But it's like, uh, you know, you wink at it, which means like uh, you kind of, you kind of look the other direction, right? You close because when you wink, you get when you wink, you close your eye, so you kind of look the other direction. Like, all right, he says, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. So now it's no more cloak for your sin, man. You know what I'm saying? Like the the men of the Lord start with the apostles, been out there warning the people, telling the people. So now it's time to repent, man. All right, because that time of ignorance is is done. The Lord ain't winking at ignorance anymore. Okay, it's it's becoming less and less. Now there's a a scripture telling us to wink at ignorance, right? Let me see if I can find that one. And we do all the time, right? This is Ecclesiastes 28 and 7. Remember the commandments and bear no malice to thy neighbor, right? That's important. Remember the covenant of the highest and wink at ignorance, right? So we do wink at ignorance, right? But you get to the point now where people, you tell people stuff and they still do it, right? It's because they don't care. They don't think about the repercussions that could happen, Right? And so we do wink at ignorance all the time. Eleven forty four, call it Abraham Shai. We wink at ignorance or ignorance all the time, right? We just the scripture say, let the let the filthy be filthy still, let the unjust be unjust still, right? So we just let them continue in the way they're going. And if it's somebody close to us, we pray for them. You know what I'm saying? But that doesn't mean it's up to the heavenly Father if he's going how the judgment's going to turn out. All we can do is pray and hope. Okay. All right, it says, uh, Ephesians 4 and 18, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of the Most High through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, right? See, that's a lot of times. The ignorance is not like they don't know. It's the blindness of their minds, man. Just don't want to be uh, realistic with what's going on in the world, okay? Uh, let me see here. This is First Ezra 8 and 75. It says, For our sins are multiplied above our heads, and our ignorances have reached up into the heaven. You see that? So does it not say the same thing in Revelation 18? Right? Our sins have reached up into the heavens. Okay? He says our ignorance has reached up there too. So just as much as Jake tried to act like they not know the Lord, like, all right, I'm getting tired of people acting like they don't know, and they're not aware of something too, you know? Our sins are multiplied above our heads, man. Okay, so the Lord is getting to a point where he's going to act. And you're already seeing it, man. You know, World War Three is commencing. Joe Biden sent some more Navy ships over there to help Israel. What do you think is going to happen with that? That means America is getting involved in this war, man. Okay. Um, And this is where the mercy, the Lord gives us mercy on these things. It says, Tobit 3 and 3, remember me and look on me. Punish me not for my sins and ignorances and the sins of my fathers who have sinned before thee. See, we ask the Lord to have mercy because sometimes you might still be ignorant on some things you might not know. Right. But we, the thing is, the Lord has put the spirit on us to know all things. Right. So we you, we have a job to know. We have a job to not be ignorant and unaware. We suppose, we're supposed to always stand occupied in prophecy, watching what's going on in the world so you don't be ignorant in anything, right? I think that's the scripture too. Don't be ignorant in anything, okay? Um, Let me see if this one can go. This is Wisdom Psalm 14 and 22. Moreover, this was not enough for them that they erred in the knowledge of the Most High, right? <laughs> but whereas they lived in the great war of ignorance, those so great plagues called they peace, right? So 
uh, they earn it in their knowledge. So it's one thing to earn and go off and not knowing the most high. But, hey, ignorance is a, is a great war, too, because now you got ignorance is not bliss. Right. Ignorance is not bliss. If you don't know something, it could cause you more harm if you're unaware. It's just like um, it's just like if you never seen what poison ivy looks like, but you touch it in the, uh, in, the, in the forest, it can harm you. Right. You could be unfamiliar with uh, certain certain animals or certain things, you know, and they could cause you more harm. So knowing more things is always uh, beneficial. You know what I'm saying? Now, knowledge can be good. Knowledge does puff up, but knowledge can be good, man. You know, uh, let me see here. Uh, this is Ecclesiastes 4 and 25. And no wise speak against the truth, but be abashed for the error of thine ignorance. See that? And no wise you're supposed to come against truth like, oh, man, I didn't know this. You know, the scripture ain't lining it out this way. No, nah, man, it says, but be abashed, which is like, it's a sense of shame uh, of the error of thine anger. So you did something without knowing, right? You're supposed to feel a little, some shame, right? Bashful, okay? You know, and I, I tell this story every now and then, but um, <laughs> this is some years ago, but I used to brush my hair with a, a boar head's brush. And, you know, I never thought, not, no big deal about it. I just thought it was a fine brush. But then... uh. The brother Osh from Miami came over to my house one day and he was in my bathroom. He was like, oh, this is a boarhead's brush? And I was like, yeah. I was like, that boy's soft, <laughs> you know? He's like, bro, it's a boar's head brush. And I guess I just never thought about it, you know? He was like, it's a boar's. And I was like, damn, boar. I was like, that's a fucking pig. He was like, yeah. He was like, yeah, it is, bro. And this was an expensive, nice brush that I had, too. And I was just like, I was like, calm, brother. And we just like looked at each other for a second. I was like, throw it away. And then he tossed it in the trash. And I never, I never, I took that trash and I threw it away. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, that's just a little story. But it was a, it says, be abashed of the error of thine ignorance. So, you know, that was, I felt a little ashamed for, uh, for having that in the first place. You know, let me, let me get the definition of abashed. But I, I felt some shame for having that because it's like, damn, like I should have knew better. You know what I'm saying? But he, I just never thought about it. You know what I'm saying? You see brush. You you, you know, when they say, the Lord say you're not supposed to eat and touch swine. You know, you thinking this got shit to do with food. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't even think about it applying to my brush. You know what I'm saying? But uh, see that? The word abashed here, it says to be embarrassed, disconcerted, or ashamed. You see? So it's embarrassing, you know, that was like, even though it was my brother, but it's still like, you got to feel some shame for your error of your ignorance. Like, damn, like, I, I, I can't believe I went off, bro. I can't believe I did this. I can't believe I let that happen. You know what I'm saying? But you were ignorant in the matter. You know, I was ignorant. I had, I didn't, I wasn't thinking, but now that was edifying that, that, that exhortation and rebuke was edifying because now I, uh, now, whenever I go look for brushes, that's the first thing I'm looking for. I'm looking for nylon, you know, synthetic, something like that. You know, I'm not looking for, I don't want to see no, uh, no damn boar. If I see boar's head or them light brown tips, I already know it's boar's head, man. Okay. Let's see. Uh, I had a couple more. This is uh, Ecclesiasticus 23. And, uh. Two, no, three, it says, lest my ignorances, I started to, who will set my scourges over my thoughts and the discipline of wisdom over my heart, that they spare me not for mine ignorances and it pass not by my sins, lest my ignorances increase and my sins are bound to my destruction and I fall before mine adversaries and mine enemy rejoice over me whose hope is far from thy mercy. You see that? So this is where uh, you got to, Try to know things. You got to try to be aware because it says, lest my ignorance is increased. So you're in more things you don't know about, you can't do anything about, right? Right? So it says, and my sins are bound to my destruction. So now you you going off and from your ignorance. You sinning and from your ignorance. And then your enemies get the upper hand on you, man. All right? And it says, my enemy rejoice over me whose hope is far from thy mercy. So 
The Lord will have much more mercy on us than the heathen will, obviously. The heathen want to see our destruction of us, man. You know, the two-thirds want to see our destruction, you know. But we, we want the Lord's mercy so we can't let our, our sins abound to our destruction due to our ignorances, man. Okay, that's that's important, you know. Uh, but this is Hebrews uh, 10, and 40, 10 and 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. You see, so you sin, you, you sin and willfully after you receive the knowledge of the truth. Hey, man, now you got a problem. Now it's time to, the Lord can judge, man. It's, he said there remain no sacrifice for sins, man. You got to you gotta know what you're doing and know that, uh, you know, we all, it says we all fall short of the glory, bro. But all of them, you know, bro, you shouldn't be doing anything that's like, you just know it's off. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you got to cook on the Sabbath, okay. If you got to, you know what I'm saying, uh, you got down with your woman and you was unclean, okay. Like, those are things that, uh, before you came to camp, you know, those are things that the Lord can have mercy on. You know what I'm saying? You know, but if you just doing something blatantly off, bro, the Lord is going to destroy you, man. Because now you're just sinning willfully with no... With no thought of judgment, right? Being a reprobate. Reprobate is void of judgment, okay? Just thinking that everything is going to be cool. This is Ecclesiastes 20 and 3. How good is it when thou art reproved should show repentance for so thou shalt escape willful sin, you see? So the Lord says if you get reproved and you get corrected, right, to repentance, that's how you escape willful sin. You know I can't do this no more because I got approved i got i got corrected i got cut you see what i'm saying so this is how the lord is is showing us how to operate and understand not to be ignorant in anything man i might see if i can find that one too all right let me try this last scripture this is uh ecclesiastes i had two more really ecclesiasticus 15 and 20 it says uh let me start at 18 it says, for the wisdom of the Lord is great, and he is mighty in power, and beholdeth all things. And his eyes are upon them that fear him, and he knoweth every work of man. Right? These are, those are his chosen, his, his elected a nation of Israel. But he says, he hath commanded no man to do wickedly. Neither have he given any man license to sin, man. So you ain't just got a, a free check to just go do what you want. If you get a license for something, you like it. You want a boating license. You got to go and you got to pay money to get a boating license. You might have to take a class. You know, you want your driver's license. There's certain pre-step steps that you got to do in order to get that, man, in order to get a license. So the Lord ain't passing out. No, but like, hey, yo, you get a, uh, now the Lord is merciful. But if you know something, you know committing adultery is wrong. You going to commit adultery. Guess what, man? He ain't giving you no license for it. He ain't saying... Hey yo, you got you you good to go now. I'm a, I'm a wink at your ignorance. I'm gonna look the other way because no, nah, now you know better. So now, judgment is gonna follow after that, man. You know that's what's gonna happen, right? He didn't give you a license to approve and just do what you want. No, nah, it don't work like that, man. Okay, uh, let me let me look that scripture up first, and then I'll get my last one. Uh, not ignorant. I think I know where I said too. Oh, that's Second Peter. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Ecclesiastes. Yeah, this is what I thought. Ecclesiasticus five and fifteen. It says, "Be not ignorant of anything in a great matter or a small." You see, so we really not supposed to be ignorant. We supposed to be knowing, right? We're supposed to know what's going on, things that are happening, right? That's how you stay occupied in prophecy. He said, "Blessed is he who is found watching." When the Lord returns, man. So we're supposed to try to know as much as we can. You know, they say in the world, knowledge is power. Applied knowledge is power, right? So that's so you can't be ignorant of anything, great matter or small, man, because it all involves you in one way or the other. You know, that's that's important. That's how we become better. That's how we become watchmen. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but this is the last section I got. This is First Thessalonians 5 and 1. But of the times and of the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Right? We know that the Lord is coming. We know. We see in the prophecies. We see in 
to see him coming. We seeing these wars pop off. We seeing these people be like sheeple. We seeing all these things. We know the Lord is coming as a thief in the night, man. He's going to pop up on these people. It says, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with a child, and they shall not escape. And see, that's what's happening, like with this war and all these things that's going on. Everybody thinking that peace and safety. And then next thing you know, you're going to have goddamn incels at your doorstep. If you don't, you know what I'm saying, without the love of the Lord on your side of you and the world, you know, but we got the love of the Lord on our side, Lord willing, you know, a hedge of protection, a safety, a shadow, right? It says, but ye brethren are not in darkness that that day shall overtake you as a thief. It says, so that's that the Lord said, we not in darkness. We're completely aware of all of these things that are happening. So when the Lord comes, we're going to know what it is. It says, you are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness, right? So we, we want to be lit, lit uh, lights for Yahweh Shemeshah. We want his word to shine brightly, right? We're not men of darkness, right? That dark demon spirit, right? It says, therefore, let us not sleep as do others, right? So this is not talking about literal. We literally do got the light. We are the righteous uh, enlightened ones, the Illuminati, you know what I'm saying? But I don't, you know, this is not talking about literal light though, right? Uh, this is talking about we're, when you're children of the day, right? You're, you're up, you're active, you know what's going on, right? But at the nighttime, that's when people sleep, right? That's when people sleep. But so, so that's why I said, let us, let, therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober, right? So while everybody else is sleeping, we're being aware of what's going on. Our eyes are constantly on the on the goal, on the prize, on the kingdom, on prophecy, on the destruction of Babylon. Those are always what our minds are on. So let us watch and be sober. So so that that's why we keep our eye on the prize, man. All right. So rather stay occupied in prophecy. Keep praying to Yahweh Bashim Al Shah. Don't be ignorant because the Lord is getting to the point where he's going to start winking at people's ignorance and he's going to, he's about to start judging this place and we can see it, you know, so Lord willing, we'll be on the right side, but hey, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechakodash, and double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well and peace and mercy to the elect. Until next time, Shalom.